Shalom to all of you who woke up early this morning. My name is Chris Nikomana. I'm the host of the Kanguka broadcast. Today is Monday and I would like to remind our new listeners that Kanguka is a Kirundi word, the language of Burundi, and it means wake up. If you're listening to the broadcast through the radio or if you're receiving them via WhatsApp, please be aware that you can access all the broadcasts at any time by visiting the Kanguka website, kanguka.com, or by visiting the Kanguka English channel on YouTube or by downloading the Kanguka mobile app on your phone. Just type Kanguka. That's K-A-N-G-U-K-A. I hope that you all had a great weekend. Today we are starting a brand new week and I hope that you are expecting to receive all the things that God has prepared for you this week. As usual on Mondays, I like to remind you about the guiding principles of Kanguka. The first principle is to accept the will of God even if it's different from our own will. The second is to pray every day and the third is forbidden to complain. Instead, we must give thanks in everything. Today I'm going to talk about the second principle which is to pray every day. I want you to understand that prayer is life. In the same way that you need to breathe every day, you also need to pray every day. A Christian can't live without praying. If you are a Christian and you don't pray, it means that you are spiritually dead. You have no life. You can't live without praying. In the same way that you can't live without breathing, you can't live without praying. Prayer is life. Many people only pray when they want to make a request to God. But I want you to understand that prayer must be part of your daily life. Today I want to tell you that when you pray, the words you say are immediately heard in heaven. Many people pray. I know that many of you who are listening to me used to pray, but at some point you stopped praying. You used to have a prayer life, but you stopped praying because you felt like your prayers aren't heard. Sometimes you pray and you don't see anything happening. You don't have any vision. You don't feel anything changing in your body. Your situation is still the same. You're still facing the same problems. But I want to tell you that if God is silent, it doesn't mean that he can't hear you. God hears you. He's not doing anything yet, but he wants to see if you have faith. Faith is not based on what you see, but it's based on what you believe in your heart. If you believe that God exists and you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you pray in the name of Jesus, you need to know that your prayer is heard even if nothing happens. This morning, I want to give you an example from the life of Daniel. Daniel prayed for 21 days and nothing was happening. He didn't see a vision or anything else, but he continued to pray because he had faith. Maybe you've been praying for more than 21 days. Maybe you've prayed for 6 months and you still don't see anything. Or you've prayed for a year and nothing has changed. But I want to encourage you this morning. I want to show you that there is power when you pray. From the very first day that you started to pray, God heard you. In Daniel chapter 10 verse 12, we read about Daniel's fast. He fasted for 21 days and on the 21st day, an angel appeared to him. You need to understand that for the first 20 days, he didn't see anything. He didn't have any visitation. Nothing happened, but he continued to pray because he had faith. In the same way, even if you don't see anything, don't quit. Continue to pray because all the words you say are heard in heaven. So we can see in Daniel chapter 10 verse 12 the words that the angel spoke when he appeared to him. The angel said, Do not fear Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before God, your words were heard, and I have come because of your words. I want you to understand that the angel is not saying that it's Daniel's prayer on the 21st day that brought him. No, he said, From the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before God, his words were heard from the very first day he started to pray. But even though his words were heard from day one, God didn't react immediately. He didn't send an angel. He didn't give him a vision. Nothing changed on the first day. Nothing changed on the second day. Nothing changed on the third day. Three weeks went by without any changes. Maybe for you it's been six months or you still don't see any changes. Maybe it's been two years and you still don't see any changes. But I want to encourage you. I want you to know that from the very first day you started to pray, God heard your problem. Whenever you pray in the morning, God hears your prayers. You should never stop praying and you need to pray every day.
It's now time to continue our study of the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Paul was inspired by the Holy Spirit when he wrote this letter and the Holy Spirit was showing him how the church should behave. Last Friday, we completed chapter 2 and today we are going to start chapter 3. If you read this chapter, you see that it's easy to understand, but it also contains hidden secrets, it contains revelations, and we need to understand what the Spirit of God is telling us. In verse 1, we can see that Paul calls himself a prisoner of Christ Jesus. He said, I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus for you Gentiles. Paul is writing to the Gentiles. I want to remind you again that the word Gentile means anyone who is not a Jew. In some other versions, they call them strangers. That's why Paul referred to the Ephesians as Gentiles because they were not Jews. As I mentioned before in his letters, Paul usually referred to those who aren't Jews as Gentiles or foreigners. These were people who came from nations which were not in covenant with God. In the old days, God only had a covenant with one nation. Israel was the only nation in the world that had a covenant with God. So, if you were not a Jew, you were called a Gentile. Here in verse 1, Paul wrote that he was the prisoner of Christ. Let me explain why he called himself a prisoner of Christ. He calls himself a prisoner of Christ because he already understood that it was no longer him who lives, but it was Christ who lives in him, as he wrote in Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. When Paul calls himself a prisoner, it means that he can no longer do whatever he wants. I know that some of you are listening to me from a prison cell. You are in prison and you can go wherever you want. Your options are very limited and there are prison guards who keep watching you. You can go to the beach. You can go to a game. You can go visit people. You can go to the places where you want to go. If you are a prisoner, you are under the authority of someone who is above you. You have to do what he wants. You go where he wants you to go. You stay within the limits that he has established. So when Paul said that he is a prisoner of Christ, it means that he understood that he can no longer go wherever he wants. He can no longer do whatever he wants. He must do what Christ wants him to do. We should all reach that level. We should all get to a point where we are prisoners of Christ. I know that there are some Christians who don't like that expression. If you say that you are a prisoner of Christ, they say that it's not true because we have received freedom. But I want you to understand that it's freedom, but that freedom is the freedom from Satan. It means that Satan can no longer control you, but when it comes to Christ, you're not free from him. You must do what Christ wants you to do. That's why the first guiding principle of Kanguka says that we must accept the will of God even if it's different from our own will. It means that you don't just do what you want, but you must do what God wants. If you think about something and you just go ahead and you do it without praying, without seeking God, if you go wherever you want, if you work with whomever you want to work with, if you marry the person you want without seeking God's approval, it means that you still lack understanding. It means that you still haven't given your life to Jesus. When you truly give your life to Jesus, you say to him, I give you everything. I will do whatever you want me to do. I won't go to any place where you don't want me to go. That's why I keep teaching you about preparing your day. When you prepare your day, you're saying, today I want to be your prisoner. I want to go where you want me to go. I want you to lead me so I can do only the things that are pleasing to you. My wish for all the listeners is that you get to that level of becoming a prisoner of Christ so we can all do what he wants us to do instead of doing what we want. Verse 6 says that the Gentiles were given the opportunity to become fellow heirs. It means that all the people who are not Jews have also become heirs to the kingdom of God like the Jews. We now have access to the promises made to Abraham even though we are not Jews. God willing, we will continue tomorrow. I wish you all a wonderful day. If you want to repent or you're transformed by these teachings, you can contact us by sharing your testimony in order to edify other listeners by contacting us on plus 256-781-377-337.